Hi, this is your host Sapna Bhartia and welcome to TFR Let's Talk. Today we have with us Nick Vermande, Principal Developer Advocate at Ondat. Nick, it's great to have you on the show. Yeah, thank you. I'm really happy to be there. Really thrilled. Thank you for having me. We have hosted on that before, but it's been, I think, almost a year now. Not a year, but it's 2022. So please quickly remind our viewers what is on that all about. On that is a software solution that provides distributed data services for uh, stateful application running in Kubernetes. So I would say that our mission um, is to reduce the friction for developers when they are adopting Kubernetes as their platform of choice uh, to run those stateful applications, which are, you know, the traditional mission critical application. You folks recently announced Trusso, if I pronounce it correctly. Trusso, correct. Tell us, yeah, Trusso. Uh, please tell us, you know, what it is and what does it do? So Trusso is an open source project that um, we have initiated to solve a very particular uh, problem within Kubernetes, which is the encryption of uh, resources, and in particular, the encryption of uh, Kubernetes secrets. I mean, that may be weird, but secrets in Kubernetes, they are not really secrets, and you need to, to add a, a layer of, of encryption on top of that. Now, the challenge is that um, the management and the um, externalization of um, the management of those resource encryption, as well as the, um, the different keys, um, are difficult to do it in Kubernetes. There's no standard way to do it. So Kubernetes provide high level rules um, uh, to do that, but it's really up to the vendor to figure out how they want to integrate with Kubernetes. So essentially, I mean, in a nutshell, Trusso is acting as a middleman uh, and it's a KMS Kubernetes plugin that streamlines the integration of all the backend, you know, encryption and KMS providers such as HashiCorp Vaults and, um, you know, just other KMS in general. Can you uh, also talk a bit about uh, when we, you're talking about secrets and encryption, uh, what is the need for that? Uh, and uh, when we talk about them, are we talking about the, the security space or I just want to basically understand, you know, the problem area. Yeah, exactly. This is exactly, you know, the about the securing the, the Kubernetes cluster. And, you know, with Kubernetes adoption, we see that uh, more and more customers are ad also adopting Kubernetes for more mission critical stateful applications, such as, you know, databases, uh, message queuing, all of that. So it becomes super, I mean, all the data becomes super sensitive and anyone with, you know, access to the cluster potentially can see all the passwords, all, uh, you know, sensitive information that is used for databases, including Kubernetes secrets, because secrets in Kubernetes, they are just encoded in base 64. They are not encrypted, which means that anyone with just enough permission can see all the secrets that are stored in your single etcd uh, database inside kubernetes so the idea is to encrypt uh, those secrets actually kubernetes allows you to encrypt any any sort of resources it handles but probably secret is the most important ones um, so so that you know you can not only encrypt data using secrets but those secrets then you need to put them in a safe place ideally outside of Kubernetes, and this is what Trusso allows. So you have a separation of duty. You, you have the encrypted data within Kubernetes, but you manage the, 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 the key to uh, encrypt and decrypt, decrypt all this information outside of the cluster. Last year, uh, uh, NSA came out with the Kubernetes hardening guidance as well. Did they also uh, kind of uh, cover Kubernetes secrets, you know, to protect APIs or it, that was out of outside of the scope? And if they did, yep. and if they did, you know, uh, there was meant, you know, for, you know, federal or, you know, public use case, but how does, how does this also help, you know, every Kubernetes, uh, you know, consumer out there? Yeah, so I think, uh, top of my head, I think they mentioned it. Last time I, you know, I read it was like a long time ago when I was preparing specific certification for uh, security around Kubernetes. Um, but yeah, definitely those are the guide guidelines to uh, harden your cluster. And top of mind, even before starting to think about running your application in Kubernetes, um, secrets are really key to everything. Because 
as a you know as a native resource, it is used for pretty much everything. Every single application will will have to store some secret. Think about just AWS. Maybe you you will do some automation and needs to and you will need to uh, to store your AWS credential in a secret. Now, if those secrets are not encrypted, well, uh, <laughs> you know that's basically a, a, a backdoor to to do the, to the entire cluster and to the entire cloud, which is now external to the cluster. So that's really a key dimension because the footprint and the scope is uh, not only Kubernetes, but um, also what you store in Kubernetes and what potentially you give people access outside of the cluster, like the cloud providers, for example. So I think for users, of course, you have to um, pay attention to what NIST has um, released. And fundamentally, maybe you won't, not everything would be applicable to you, so you have to pick, um, you know, the quick wins, the battles that you can fight easily, uh, and secrets is definitely one of them. There has been other efforts also in this direction, you know, too, so it's not the the first one. So can you also talk about, of course, depending on how we look at it, some products, you know, I mean, there are always users, their projects are successful, some are not that successful. What sets Trusso apart from them? Um, and also why you folks chose uh, open source way for that? Yeah, sure. So, uh, I mean, the first part, uh, what makes Truso different is that as opposed to any vendor solution that implements its own kind of, um, you know, way of integrating with the KMS provider, um, Truso is there to, as a man, you know, in the middle and allows you to use kub, um, I would say, native commands. So you continue to manage everything through, through a kubectl, and just native paradigms. And the ultimately the backend provider, like the vendor who provide the, the security features, doesn't even know it's running on, you know, that, that is gonna be you know working with, with with keys and encryption for Kubernetes. So the main difference is that instead of having every vendor that does its own thing, its own, you know, or use its own patterns, its own has its own roadmap. Um, Trusso is the man in the middle that allows you to keep things native to Kubernetes while at the same time abstracting uh, the backend KMS provider. So essentially, um, we facilitate. We want to facilitate the integration of all these vendors with Kubernetes so that it becomes easier for developers to consume them by staying in this uh, Kubernetes format. Uh, and now the second part, uh, which was why open source. Again, it's completely a consequence of that is we want not also we have the first release which comes with um with a HashiCorp vote so HashiCorp is our first partner to contribute to uh, to that um but of course the idea is to have more later uh whether it's uh, you know cloud kms or um other vendors and the only way to make this possible uh, i would say outside of you know all the business interest is by creating some sort of uh, open source project so everyone can contribute at the same at the same level and uh, with you know having in mind uh, the interest of the of the end user one of the beauty of open source is that of course not only you get users because of the model of open source they they can use it uh, you also build a community around it so you not only get feedback but you also get code contribution uh, there as well um, can you also talk about uh, the, the challenge with open source is you actually do not know who is using it, right? Because anybody can get the code from GitHub or GitLab, wherever you're put, putting the code. So I want to also understand if you can share, you know, of course, you mentioned, you know, Harshikar, um, uh, if you can share who is using it and what kind of feedback response you have received so far, uh, which will also kind of uh, influence the direction going forward or the roadmap. Actually, we, we developed um, this idea of uh, the open, open source project together with a uh, with a customer, uh, which is uh, Sony Vision. Um, and so he was the first to provide uh, feedback for, uh, for the open source project. So I would say so far, uh, so good. And hopefully it's, it, it's, it's the first in a, in a long list. Um, and I would say it doesn't really matter who can contribute. We have like a framework, how you should contribute, uh, how we can do pull requests, um, and just respect the guidelines. And we welcome really everyone. There's nothing really, uh, I would say, you know, secret <laughs> about the project itself. Um, it's just like putting the glue together to facilitate uh, the integration of, of those, you know, uh, critical things for for customer. And as I was saying before, uh, we expect more and more adoption um, of Trousseau because as customers are moving towards this journey of running business and more legacy application, they are transforming into, you know, modern application. 
into Kubernetes, they will um, hit all those uh, challenges and hopefully, um, you know, if they have feedback, if they want to, you know, have more integration with uh, new providers that we didn't think about, then we are happy to uh, uh, to receive any comment, um, any feedback. And as I said, we started the, the the roadmap with HashiCorp, and now we will have more providers uh, coming soon. Another beauty of open source is that you know sometimes there are use cases where folks you know they ha- they want to solve a problem, and sometimes they take initiative. So how? What what is the governance of the project? So if, let's say X Y Z, whoever wants to 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 use it, uh, do they have to rely on you, or they can just go and do it yourself themselves, and then you can help them if they want to? Yeah. So the, I mean, the the guideline, the framework is pretty open. The governance is pretty open. Uh, so typically, what's going to happen if someone wants to contribute? Uh, just do traditionally as always a pull request, and uh, of course we will examine if it's okay, we'll go through the pipeline to see if there is any bugs. Uh, and if it fits within, within the vision, that of course it has to fit within the vision, right? That's the main thing. But um, this is an open place. And uh, if there are any concern, we'll discuss them with people who want to contribute. But uh, of course we want to stay to stay as open a, a, as possible. So nothing really special, pull request, uh, engineering conversation, um, and then, you know, as more people contribute, then it's just like a voting kind of system, you know, this like democracy type of thing. Nick, thank you so much for taking time out today. And of course, talk about this project and also, you know, share the, the roadmap, uh, you know, uh, the governance. Uh, and I would love to have you back on the show as usual. So thanks for your time today. Nori, my pleasure. We'd be happy to come back. No problem.